okay welcome back to the second video on the thin pressure vessels in the last video we have defined the hoop stress and the longitudinal stress and the hoop stress is given as the pressure p that is the internal pressure p internal radius r and the wall thickness equal to t and exactly half of the hoop stress we have longitudinal stress that will be equal to internal pressure p into internal radius r divided by 2 times the thickness of the wall here we introduce the two concept one is the longitudinal joint efficiency and one is the circumferential joint efficiency are the two measures of the strength and the reliability of a welded joints in the pipes and other cylindrical structure like the boilers longitudinal joint efficiency refers to the strength of a weld that runs parallel to the axis so you can see here that this one is the axis and the weld is running or the riveting is done along the axis of the pipe or the cylinder it is expressed as a percentage that represents the ratio of the strength of the weld to the strength of the base metal let eta l represents here the longitudinal joint efficiency and eta c represents here the circumferential joint efficiency the circumferential stress or the hoop stress is associated with the longitudinal joint efficiency so this equation you have to modify it for the hoop stress in that case we have hoop stress will be equal to p multiplied by d divided by 2 times of t and is further divided by the longitudinal efficiency whereas the longitudinal stress is associated with the circumferential joint so whenever we have given the longitudinal joint efficiency and circumferential joint efficiency you have to modify the equation of hoop stress and the longitudinal stress longitudinal stress is modified as p into internal diameter d divided by 4 times of wall thickness and is divided by circumferential efficiency the circumferential joint efficiency on the other hand refer to the strength of a weld that runs around the circumference of a pipe or the cylinder it is also expressed in the similar fashion to the longitudinal joint efficiency as the ratio of the strength of the weld to the strength of the base metal both the longitudinal joint efficiency and the circumferential joint efficiency are important considerations in the design and the construction of the cylinder structure as they help ensure the integrity and the safety of the structure under the various loads and the environmental conditions as far as you are considered you are given the value of the longitudinal joint efficiency and the circumferential joint efficiency then you modify the formula of the hoop stress and the longitudinal stress hoop stress the original formula is equal to pd divided by 2t is divided by the longitudinal efficiency and in the case of longitudinal stress it is divided by circumferential joint efficiency exactly opposite you have to divide the term of efficiency in the calculation of the hoop stress and in the calculation of a longitudinal stress now we have introduced the stress that is the circumferential stress and the axial stress in the case of a thin cylinder having internal radius equal to r and the wall thickness equal to t so one stress we define along the axis that will be called as the longitudinal stress and this stress is represented by sigma l so sigma l represents here the longitudinal stress and if we divide the sigma l divided by the eng modulus in that case we can define the longitudinal or axial strain so epsilon l defined here a longitudinal strain and the longitudinal strain is given as the longitudinal stress divided by eng modulus e longitudinal stress is given as pressure multiplied by diameter divided by four times the thickness of the wall and is further divided by eng modulus e the second stress will be the hoop stress will act along the circumference so the change in the circumference to the original circumference will define here the hoop strain or the circumferential strain so let's say epsilon d represents here a hoop strain or a circumferential strain in that case we can define the epsilon d is equal to the hoop stress that equal to sigma h divided by eng modulus e and the value of the hoop stress is given in the form of pressure multiplied by internal diameter d divided by 2 times the thickness multiplied by eng modulus e 
as far as the longitudinal strain is considered it, it is acting along the axis and therefore it is responsible for change in length so it is defined as delta l divided by original length l so we have epsilon l will be same as equal to delta l divided by l delta l represents here the change in length and the l represents here the original length similar to this the hoop strain or a circumferential strain will be defined as the change in the circumference that is the product of pi into d divided by the original circumference that equal to pi d pi and pi will be get cancel here so this is same as equal to the change in the diameter divided by original diameter d so this state of stress will represent here we have horizontal axis is x axis and we have vertical axis will be y axis and perpendicular to the plane we have z axis on x axis we are getting here the longitudinal stress so we have sigma x will be same as equal to sigma longitudinal and we have sigma y will be same as equal to the hoop stress sigma h as the pressure is acting in the third dimension that is z but that is negligible value so we'll assume the stress along the z direction will be equal to zero if mu represents here the poisson ratio and we are familiar with the generalized hooke's law in the generalized hooke's law if the stress is acting along the x direction y direction and the z direction then we can find out the strain along the x direction is equal to 1 divided by ang modulus e is multiplied by sigma x minus mu times sigma y plus sigma z so we'll use this equation here and we can check here we have sigma x is same as equal to sigma l so epsilon x will be same as equal to epsilon l so in this case we have epsilon l that is the longitudinal strain will be equal to 1 upon e we have taken the value of sigma x equal to sigma l so sigma x is replaced by sigma l minus poisson ratio mu and we have sigma y is a hoop stress so we have sigma h and the stress acting along the third direction that is z direction is zero so this value is equal to zero but we know that epsilon l that is a strain along the longitudinal axis is same as equal to change in length that equal to delta l divided by l or we can write dl by l is same as equal to 1 upon ang modulus e multiplied by the stress that is longitudinal stress minus mu times the hoop stress let's say equation number one now same equation we can apply to find out the value of the strain along the y direction that is where epsilon y is equal to 1 upon ang modulus e into sigma y minus mu times sigma x plus sigma z so only i'm using here the basic equation to find out the value of the longitudinal strain and the hoop strain along the y direction we are using the hoop stress and therefore we have to use here epsilon d that is a hoop strain hoop strain is represented by epsilon d is equal to 1 by e into sigma y is same as equal to the hoop stress minus mu times the value of sigma x sigma x is same as equal to sigma l sigma z equal to 0 so we have mu times sigma l plus 0 there is no stress acting along the z direction so in this case we have diametral strain will be same as equal to the change in diameter and divided by original diameter d is equal to 1 upon ang modulus e multiplied by the hoop stress minus mu times the longitudinal stress let's say equation number two now the question is that why we are calculating this strain and why these strains are important well they help us to determine the maximum allowable pressure that a thin wall pressure vessel can withstand before it fails if the pressure exceeds this limit the vessel may rupture or leak leading to a serious consequences and therefore we must have the strain within the limit once we know the value of the hoop strain and the longitudinal strain that is if you are able to calculate the change in diameter and the change in length we are able to calculate a change in volume and based on this we can define the volumetric strain 
longitudinal strain is given as delta L. So instead of delta L, I will use symbol DL here. That is a change in length divided by original length is equal to 1 by Eng modulus into the longitudinal stress minus Poisson ratio multiplied by hoop stress. And we have a circumferential strain equal to change in diameter. This time I will use DD divided by original diameter D is given as 1 by Eng modulus into hoop stress minus Poisson ratio multiplied by longitudinal stress. And the volume of this thin cylindrical pressure vessel with the flat end, we can calculate as volume of cylinder. So we have volume is equal to pi by 4 into diameter square, that is internal diameter square multiplied by length L, where L represents the length. And if we partially differentiate this, we can calculate here the change in volume. So to calculate here the change in volume, we'll partially differentiate the V. So we'll get here pi by 4 into d square multiplied by dl plus v of pi by 4 derivative of d square will be equal to 2 times of d and again we have derivative of diameter d that is dd and is multiplied by length l so this one is representing the original volume by equation number 3 and we have change in volume is represented by equation number 4 if you are knowing the change in volume and the original volume, we can calculate here the volumetric strain. And here now we'll develop the expression for volumetric strain. So volumetric strain epsilon v is given as the change in volume that is dv divided by original volume v. We have change in volume is given by equation number 4 that is pi by 4 d square into dl plus pi by 4 2 times of d into change in diameter multiplied by original length l. And the original volume is given as pi by 4 multiplied by d square multiplied by l. So individually you can divide here pi by 4 and pi by 4 is cancelled. d square and d square is cancelled. We are getting here dl by l. dl by l is nothing but logical strain. So we have volumetric strain will be equal to the first term here is a longitudinal strain. Second term is pi by 4. One of the d will be get cancelled here. We have two times of dd divided by d. dd divided by d is the hoop strain, but it is two times. L and L will cancel. So volumetric strain will be equal to longitudinal strain plus two times of hoop strain. That is the epsilon d. So this equation you have to solve now. Already we are knowing the value of epsilon l and the epsilon d. So in both these equations of epsilon L and epsilon D, 1 by Eng modulus is common. So let's take it common here, 1 by Eng modulus into. First term here is sigma L. So we have sigma L minus mu times sigma H, mu times sigma H. Then we have plus 2 times. So plus 2 times epsilon D is equal to sigma H. So we have sigma H minus mu times sigma l and we know the relation between the hoop stress and the longitudinal stress we have hoop stress sigma h is equal to 2 times the longitudinal stress so we can very well replace here the hoop stress by 2 times the longitudinal stress so we'll get here 1 by ang modulus e a is multiplied by sigma l as it is here sigma h we can replace as 2 times of sigma l so we'll get here minus 2 times mu and sigma h is replaced by sigma l 2 times of sigma l plus we have 2 times of sigma h is 4 times of sigma l minus 2 times of mu multiplied by sigma l now sigma l can be taken common here so we have sigma l divided by ang modulus e multiplied by one value of sigma l plus 4 times sigma l that will be equal to 5 and minus 2 times of mu sigma l and minus 2 times of mu sigma l that equal to minus 4 times of mu so this one is the equation for volumetric strain in the case of thin cylindrical pressure vessels so you have to remember this equation for quick calculation otherwise you can go by the basic principle or otherwise you can remember epsilon l epsilon t in a case of epsilon l sigma l is positive and the hoop stress is multiplied by mu and epsilon d we have sigma h is positive and sigma l is multiplied by mu 
and total volumetric strain is equal to the longer strain plus 2 times of diametral strain or hoop strain or circumferential strain. The video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on Google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate. Join the course directly from your mobile. The link is given here.